everybody. Welcome to 3 Minute Thursdays. It's your source of animal rights news and gossip packed into a short, sweet three, three, I keep wanting to say three weeks, but it's only three minutes. I could do a three week Thursday. That'd be pretty miserable. But anyways, it's all packed into a short, sweet three minutes and everyone's favorite day, which of course is a Thursday. So welcome to episode 115. Here we go. As activists, we all like some sort of indication that what we're doing is working. We look to metrics like how many designers have shunned fur, how much funding laboratories are getting, and how many people took our vegan message seriously at the outreach event. But the big number we always end up looking at is how much dead flesh is produced every year. Well, the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United States just released the latest numbers, and well, uh, let's just say... As always, hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell notification, and give this video a like. If you like uh, what you're seeing, if you find it interesting, of course, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and the mighty Cranky Vegan Patreon is roaring on. We're gonna give away about $5,500 and more this month to a sanctuary grassroots project. If you want in on that, two bucks a month, join in the fun. You can't go wrong with two bucks. Anyway, um, so the first question you're asking is, who the hell is the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United States, and why should I listen to them? That's a great question. So they've been doing statistical work on these issues since like 1945. And since then they have created the largest statistical database on food and agriculture in the world. If you wanna poke around in a really nerdy webpage, that's the one to go to. They kinda know what they're doing. They recently put out their 2021 statistical yearbook, which covers up to 2019, the last complete year of data. It's also the unofficial vegan report card that tells us, eh, so how are we doing? But the numbers in here are staggering to say the least. Like while they do track the numbers for 18 different animals on their web pages, uh, in the report they stick to reporting on the top three, uh, cows, pigs, and chickens. And that's because those three accounted for nearly 90% uh, of the global lamb production in animal agriculture. So here's the big numbers. World meat production in 2019 was at 337 million tons, which is up 44% compared to the year 2000. Uh, predominantly, it was Brazil, China, and the United States who are responsible for the biggest percentage of the killing. Um, world milk production has gone up by 52% since the year 2000. And there's been an increase of egg production by 63% since the year 2000. Eee, it's unreal. So. Maybe a little good news, kind of. Uh, the amount of cow and pig flesh produced has dropped slightly between 2018 and 2019. And what we'll also probably see, according to people much smarter than me, is that the decrease will continue into 2020 and 2021. So why is that? Mostly because of COVID, right? But prior to COVID, experts are suggesting that a couple things, including the interest in a flexitarian or reducitarian diet, as well as environmental concerns is what has been driving these changes. And while that might sound promising, what that ultimately means is that people are switching from eating dead cows and dead pigs and, and switching over to eating dead chickens. So if you've been following along, that isn't that much of a surprise, right? That, that's been the trend for, for a bit now. But what that means also is that in the overall tally, more animals are being killed than ever before. People eat way more chickens than pigs and cows in a year. So to put that in like more simple terms, someone who might choose a dozen chicken wings at a restaurant instead of ordering that hamburger is contributing now to the death of six chickens instead of one cow. What about our friends living in the seas and, and the lakes and the rivers? So we're talking fish, mollusks, crustaceans, and, and other cool animals uh, swimming and crawling around in the waters. There, there was a 41% growth since 2000 to 178 million tons processed in 2019. The catch in 2019 alone was worth an estimated $406 billion. So what is there to do about it, right? It's it's overwhelming to look at these numbers and, and know that it's really only getting worse. It's heartbreaking on a level that is incomprehensible. I know everyone wants to believe that if we just simply educate enough people and guilt enough people that we can affect the demand. And when we affect the demand, the supply will shift and these numbers will start to come down. But honestly, I think you're wrong. We have been sold this lie by corporations that we are free thinking consumers driving a free market. But in reality, we are fed lies by advertising and corporations and governments to be given the impression that we need animal flesh and secretions to be healthy, to be happy. Happy. We're being steered by big business, been giving the impression that our decisions matter. But in reality, it's these corporations, it's these governments that are making the decisions. But 
that's another conversation for another time. I think shifts like that can happen when you get something like 30 or 40 or 50% of a population on board with you, on board with your ideology, and you're on board with your movement. And even then, it feels a bit questionable. Like, let's take the civil rights movement in the United States, for instance. In 1964, one year before the Voting Rights Act was passed, a Gallup poll showed that 58% of the population approved of such an act. But even with that, 68% of the population wanted moderation in the actual enforcement of said act. So like, yeah, we're all for the act, but don't actually enforce it. Let's just gradually ease it in and see what happens. And that was a fight for a human right, for decency. Like a fight for non-humans, one could argue, is much more difficult to convince the general public of and get them on your side. But when have vegans even come close to having double digit population figures in the last 80 years of the modern vegan movement. Like, now I know you're thinking, okay, here's where Jake pushes his pressure campaigns. Well, duh, come on. You thought I wouldn't loop back to them? Come on. But here's my even more depressing thought. When it comes to the grassroots animal rights movement, I'm not sure there's enough that we can do to bring necessary change to animal agriculture. I don't think we have the numbers. I don't think we have the resources. I don't think we have the experience or the strategies or the tactics to do it. I think ultimately the real change in that space, whether that's you know long-term or short-term, is gonna be made by people with deep pockets who can keep up with this pace economically and strategically of these massive industries. I'm not sure the grassroots movement has that. But all is not lost. I'm not gonna be a complete cranky vegan on this video. Apologies. Here's where I think we as the grassroots and the NGOs even can help make a dent in the animal ag industry. In the report, it says that countries like the United States, a lot of the production is exported. It's sold overseas, which means it's relying on certain industries to do this. Transportation, shipping, exportation, banking, insurance. These industries are targets for pressure campaigns. We in the grassroots have decimated the exporting and transporting of animals in the past, from live export campaigns to primates being shipped from jungles into laboratories halfway around the world. Like, why? Can't we do it here? So you know I'm a fan of knowing your own limitations, and like I said before, I'm not sure we're equipped to handle this fight, but if you all insist, I will say that I personally think this is where the smart targeting could happen. Stop guilting and shaming people over their diets. Stop going after the individual. Stop attacking other movements for not being vegan. Instead, build bridges with other movements who have a similar stake in this fight. Look at past campaigns and learn from them, like Shaq and, and, and current ones like the anti-fur campaigns to see how they're strategically picking apart an industry successfully and start putting the pieces together. Be smart, be creative, and as always, keep fighting.